Rockers, welcome to episode 10. Episode 10. Episode 10. Episode 10. Subscribe now. Yeah, what are you waiting for? Come on. Hit that button, guys. Come on. Come on. Subscribe. It's just below. It's, it's just not below. that far. Yeah. Do it. Hi, Rockers. Welcome to Mamaology Psychology episode 10. Today, we're at Man Cave in Westlands. <laughs> and today, we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic, a topic we hold dear to our hearts, actually. Um, and it's about manhood. Um, as we're not experts in that area, uh, we've got two amazing guests with us today. So I'd like to introduce Georgie, who's a notable TV presenter, used to work for CNBC and BBC. And we have Mr. Mwenisi, who is a trainer and an image consultant. So instead of me introducing everyone, uh, Georgie, if you can tell us all about Georgie, that'd be awesome. Um, <coughs> Georgie is in denial that he's in, he's in his 30s. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> likes to look good, feel good, have uh -huh. fun, laugh almost through everything. Um, and yeah, just keen on dogs. I feel dogs have a bit more personality than people. I Aww. totally agree. No, I'm down with yeah. that. Yeah, oh, exactly. So yeah, yeah, in a nutshell, <laughs> I love pastels. I love colors. I love blocks. So I, and you know, just people like who think a bit differently. So that's Georgie. Actually, I love the fact you're wearing pink. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think it makes you more of a man. You know, I, I totally agree. You know, that was on purpose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> intentional well dressing, well intentional well dressing. Well yeah. dressing. Mr. Manisi, yes. are you easy? I'm easy a yeah. Sunday morning. It was a, it a Thursday. <laughs> a beautiful Thursday. Thank you for having me. So, um, yeah, I am, uh, by day, I'm an image consultant. And by night, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very passionate about people. Um, yeah. As much as, yeah, they can be a little bit frustrating, I'm fascinated by by yeah. people and that's why um i've gone into people development mm. training mm. Uh, image consulting um this is actually something that was a hobby because i love clothes i mm. love clothes i love shoes i love accessories mm -hmm. um i i i'm big on grooming and how that that makes me feel and what it does yes. when people respond to you in a particular way so mm. uh that hobby turned into a, a career and uh, it has led me to do a bunch of other things yeah. i'm i'm an entrepreneur um, and I dabble a little bit in uh, investments. Nice. Well. So, okay. Yeah. Multi-talented. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. before we delve into the questions, yeah. I want to celebrate the fact that we're up to episode 10. Yes. Okay? Well done. Yes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> we made it. We made it. And we are in the great man cave. I personally come here to get my shaves, my yeah. clean shaves. <laughs> um, even though I'm not a man, it's the best, it's the great place to come and get your shaves done. So um, it's based in The Alchemist. So make sure you come and get your shaves here next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So the reason why I called you, summoned you both here today, Georgie and Mr. Manisi, <laughs> is because we, we felt like you are um, really great examples of what we think um, a modern man should be <laughs> um, in, this, in this day and age. And um, I really wanted to discuss not just manhood, but there's this concept called um, metrosexuality. Um, that it's, it's actually a marketing term that was coined in 1994. Oh, sorry, you wanted to no, jump cool. in? It's All right. fine. Um, and it's it's and actually a combination of two words. So metropolis is in metro a bit, and then sexuality is like um, actually I'm not quite sure about what that second term has to do with it. But anyway, <laughs> um, it's really descriptive of the modern man. So it's a man that likes to groom himself, um, use kind of personal care products, and takes pride in his his, his appearance. Um, so I feel like. Um, the, the, the man is the traditional concept of the man is is, is changing mm. and that's what I wanted to talk about right now so I feel Firstly, like do you feel that that's the case yes true because um I'm not sure I'm not sure about that so what what do you feel uh, is a good description of the modern man um in your opinions Let's start you with you go? yeah sure yeah. all right well I think you know with that term metrosexual um the the idea was was that this is a heterosexual man yeah. who is leaning more towards um, a feminine appreciation mm. of themselves in terms of grooming and, and how they carry themselves. Yeah. Because um, the traditional version of masculinity that pervaded, you know, early 20th century mm. industrial revolution into maybe this, the 60s and the 70s was this, you know, rugged, 
I'll shower when I feel like, yes. you know, I'll grow everything out <laughs> and my hands are rough and, you know, um, you know, take me as I am because yes, I am like, the provider. Me, yes. I am man. I am man. Yeah, very much like yeah. animal. I am animal. Yes. And, uh, yes. And Flintstones and I'm in the cave. Yeah. Um, and, and, and yeah, I think, I think with the advent of, of, you know, uh, access to information and TV, um, uh, I think men started paying more attention to um, things like, you know, grooming and, uh, and, 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 and so maybe the term came because the only other people who were paying attention to that yeah. were uh, men of a different orientation. Yeah. Mm. And, and for, for the longest time, um, uh, being, being uh, uh, non-heterosexual was mm. considered, you know, a, a bit of a taboo. So mm. the metrosexual was right on the edge of that mm. um and now in 2021 we are we are way past the 90s and yes. mm. and, and right now I, I don't think there's one specific definition of what the modern man is mm. i think the conversation is maybe about what masculinity is yes. and what it means for for different people yeah. Yeah. what does it mean for um people who are not <clears throat> hetero what does it mean for people mm. who are um who are hetero but 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 enjoy you know not being in a cave, yeah. um, you know. Yes. <laughs> what does it mean? No, for no funny, shade, no so shade on man cave. Yeah. Man yeah. You know, what does it mean for women who 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 appreciate that kind of yeah. ruggedness? Yeah. Because there are women who yeah. really are into all of that. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I I watch, I watch, I love watching um, old you know classic shows like um, Troy and um, you know the Three Hundred and mm. and Vikings, and yeah. I can only imagine you know as much as the chivalry and all of that, I mean, mm. those people must have stank. But do, do, you, <laughs> not, do, you, not, do you not think shows like that kind of fetishize, fetishize uh, what it means to be a man? It's sure. almost like, yeah. I mean, you can't, you can't run away from okay. masculinity. I mean, yeah. we are physiologically um, bigger, stronger, uh, more aggressive physiologically. Mm. We can't run away from mm. that. And so those traits will always be there. Yeah. Um, so to, I think, you know, whatever, whatever softening has, has gone on, in the in in the in the most recent times about masculinity yeah. um has have been because our environment does not require us to go and like you know declare war and yeah, exactly. and you know exactly. fight with spears and all of that stuff mm. i mean our environment is now laptops and cell phones yeah. and you know and 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 very expensive coffees <laughs> <laughs> so well, sorry what what do you think caused that shift then because you mentioned um like i don't know maybe modern culture in terms of tv Metro, the metro, the metro mm. lifestyle, metropolis lifestyle, living yeah. in the city. Um, the city is not, is not a, is not a place where you have to fight for your food mm. or hunt for whatever or protect your honor or anything like that. The, 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 the modern city is, um, the requirements of the modern man in the modern city, um, mm. have a different, um, uh, aspect to it. So mm. you will be in, in close contact and proximity with people. So you have to smell a certain way. Yeah. Um, People are, are are more aesthetically appreciative now, yeah. so you have to look a certain way. Um, so I think it's just that it's just it's just city living that's that's caused. Do you, that. do you think that par partially it's um, it's defined by what women want? It's that's a solid point. Because yeah. men <clears throat> men do a lot of things for, for the women. male attention, the female attention. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, heterosexual men. So to your question, what do you think caused the shift? I think it was the um, realization that you're being seen. Yeah. So social media, for example, mm -hmm. there's a social commentator, yes. cultural commentator in the UK called Max Simpsons. I think he said uh, metrosexuality could also be the uh, same as a term called sponosexual, yeah. where he said men use their bodies uh, as the ultimate accessory. So yeah. you go to the gym, you look a certain way, yeah. people appreciate you a bit more. Yeah. You do your nails, people appreciate you differently. Yeah. So you assess how people view you and then you craft your entire life and lifestyle around yeah, it. Yeah. Because since even the longest time, even all the movies, Troy, you know, 300, the best they ever looked was when they were going for war. Yeah. You know, like the other I agree. Of, right? You know, and it's very clear because that's when you're being seen and mm -hmm. you're on the front line mm -hmm. and you're whatnot. So it hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. Hundreds, uh, decades later, mm -hmm. centuries that's later. That's true, actually, yeah. It hasn't changed. Yeah. We just have social media. And mm -hmm. aside from the people in your village seeing you, now the whole world can see mm -hmm. you. Right. And you want to look the absolute best. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can ever walk out with chip nails. Right. I, I don't understand. Like, you I know, thought that was, was just me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> It doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know, you can't, you can't not smell nice yeah. or smell fresh, you know. So I think it's just that a realization that you're being seen. And also men have 
an innate and an innate needs to get validated mm. even if we fight it with all of our masculinity yeah. you know no i'm good either way no she told you you smell nice yeah, yeah. All right. so it goes such a long way okay yeah. no good point so do you feel like this is driven by like she said what women want or do you think it's also a com- 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 the competitive nature of Men. men amongst men yeah, yeah. amongst men but yeah. do you think it's between men or do you think it's again to then see female, female attention. attention i don't i think it's a mix of both let's say for example if let's say like the first time i saw monesi i'm looking at how well fitting his yeah. top very, is very nice. his yeah. his cut <laughs> yeah. if he's cut you're like oh you came to a podcast uh, a screening with a bad haircut you know something <laughs> like <Yeah>. that <clears throat> and it has nothing to do with you yeah. guys right and then we sit and then you're like okay he also presents himself well mm-hmm. and he and that now has something to do with you so you see it's a mix of both it's between men and now outside our realm as well mm. that's really refreshing because mm. i always thought that it was women who had that attention to detail who would mm. notice oh okay he needs to kind of fade that a bit more or, you know his his suit isn't fitting so well so yeah. it's interesting that you know you're able to to mm. say that do you feel like a lot of men kind of hold back from um showing appreciation to other men because uh. of fear of seeing seeming not manly enough do you understand my my question uh, absolutely because women can appreciate something and say oh this is mm. this is really nice shoes mm. you're wearing yeah, do I'm men at- compliment each other yeah. no very rarely uh, yeah, um, and, 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 and they will never do it in public but a man will appreciate for example if I see Georgie's got something nice that I like yeah. you know I'll, I'll take note of it and then I'll find him <laughs> like somewhere else and be like yo bro um, <laughs> so, or like when you're leaving yeah, you're like, oh I'm by leaving. the way those are yeah. nice yeah. cheers yeah. like you know um, so you know what's the plug you know yeah. um, um, <laughs> but, but women are, 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 are much more communicative and, 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 and expressive mm. and I think that has to do partly I, I and, and this is a huge generalization mm. um, that, that we are creatures of ego mm. and women are more creatures of emotion. And so mm. you're more likely to express yourself yeah. um, and how you feel about certain things because it's always on the surface. Mm. And for us, the ego is what dominates and, and the emotion uh, is really down suppressed. at the bottom. Mm. Yeah. And so men, because we don't really talk to each other much, yeah. I mean, in, in, uh, unless unless I'm talking to you about, you know, um, you know what, what, what deal are we going to do or what, what, plan are we going to have for our careers or mm. or how are we getting on and how are we sorting out a certain problem mm. men don't talk to each other mm. unless it is I've, that's something i really want to talk about yeah. yeah um how do you feel do you feel that that's changed over time men's ability to be more connected with their emotions or do you feel like it's still something that men struggle with i think it's something that men struggle and that's why we have the highest suicide rates yeah. and that's why we're the most in jail um, yeah. and, and that's why, you know, we are who we are. Mm. Um, but it's also why we play sports because yeah. you need an outlet yeah. for that madness. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think physiologically, I don't, I don't know if it, if it, if it's something that will ever change. It's certainly mm. softening because, um, for the longest time now, uh, school and the education system have had more female teachers uh, teaching boys yeah. and so the, the 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 aspect of getting in touch with your emotion has been a continuous shift um from from early learning up until mm. um the high school and university but don't you think that kind of education starts at home with how the relationship between um, mother and son and father and son yeah and that and that now that's a bigger conversation yeah. around the family dynamic because mm. families are changing right now like I said we've got different orientations uh we've got people adopting we've got single parent huge single parent uh households um and and so whatever's happening at home and whatever's happening in 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 school or whatever's happening in your environment you will be shaped by the five closest people around you yeah. and and because early learning um institutions are primarily female driven organization yeah. so boys are being forced uh, are being encouraged to get more in touch with their feelings and that's what we're seeing now and that's why we're seeing maybe a softening of traditional masculinity mm. um you know anybody who who grew up where there was initiation for example in traditional african cultures um you know circumcision and and the whole initiation process was a big thing and if you went through that it's like well now I have, I've, I've crossed over. Yeah. Um, but right, we, we don't see that anymore, especially mm. in, in cities. People mm. don't talk about the importance of initiation and, you know, manhood. And I think that that erosion is, is, is causing a bit of a blurring of the lines. Mm. Um, so, you know, for, for, for us not, not talking to each other. I mean, I, I look at, I look at my WhatsApp groups. Um, I look at my WhatsApp groups and I compare it to my wife's WhatsApp groups. <laughs> 
I'm talking to like <laughs> guys about you know stuff, and we, we'll share stuff about sports, really lewd <laughs> things, um, maybe the political environment, and then that's it. Yeah. But then women will talk about literally everything that's happening in their day. I don't. I have never given another man an update <laughs> on what I am doing. <laughs> No, but like ever. Do you not? Do you not think? Sorry. Do you not think that's why women live longer? Yes, hundred percent. Definitely, hundred percent. And don't you think that it actually affects relationships between men and women? What I think is that we must accept that we are different. Yeah. I think mm. the minute you, th- the minute we are, we are creating this idea that we are the same. I think that's the beginning of of a lot of yeah. mess. We will never, ever, ever be ever give birth unless you well, know whatever we are physiologically <laughs> different yeah. yes. you know so so appreciating that difference i think is the first step mm-hmm. and so trying to merge mm. and, and say look we are there's the gender neutral and all of this mm. stuff I, I i struggle with that mm. we are different and so appreciating mm. that difference is probably useful yeah for relationship yes. sake so that you know i mean the left shoe is the left shoe it's never going to be the right shoe the right mm. shoe is the right shoe for yes. a reason so each does what it's supposed to do um, the minute you you say, oh well, we just have shoes, then you know we're, okay. you, you're, you're gonna f- you're gonna be fitting something where it's not supposed. I'm gonna to challenge that a little bit because I feel like um, I agree with you and I don't agree with you. Mm-hmm. I feel like there is something called the human condition. I feel mm-hmm. like we all have emotions, we all feel pain, sure. anger, annoyance. Mm-hmm. But I think how we vary as women, men and women, is how we channel those emotions. Mm-hmm. And when does it become something that's environmental or something that is uh, or nature or nurture? I don't know when, when or how that happens, but I do feel there is something that we all share innately as human mm. human beings. Mm. Um, and I, I like this concept of metrosexuality because I feel like it's another way of men expressing themselves um, that doesn't necessarily require you to like, I don't know, have a mud fight or mm. show aggression. So um, I don't know. I do agree that we are very fundamentally different, but I think we are also very much the, like. the same. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like sometimes manhood is a trap yeah. for men. Um, I, 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 in in that it doesn't allow you to fully express yourself, and that's dam- can be a damaging. Box. Like a proper box, yeah, a, a proper box within which there are specific guidelines that you're mm. not supposed to stray. You know, like it's like running a hundred meter dash, and you can't go to this person's line yeah. or whatnot. That's exactly what manhood it is. But over the years, it's like for example, you're on a call with your dad, and then right at the end of the call, you say, "I love you." And he just goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, dude, like be- he doesn't know what to do, right? <laughs> but when my child, I, I know when my kid, when that time comes and my kid says, I love you, I'll be like, yeah. oh, I love you too, man. Yeah. You know, like, because uh, over time you start yeah. to realize, like, you know, like, this is normal. And yeah. this is, so that to your point, nature versus nurture. So um, I think there's no templates. Everything is customizable depending on what exactly you mm. want or what exactly mm. you feel mm. or what exactly you've been exposed mm. to. And I think that's exactly what also metrosexuality mm-hmm. is. Because even within metrosexuality, there are some things some people won't do. Some people won't do f- manicures, pedicures, but mm-hmm. they'll get a nice cut. Mm-hmm. They'll dress well, mm-hmm. but they'll have rough hands. Yeah. They'll go to the gym with no gloves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are yeah. levels to it. Yeah, there's <laughs> levels, right? So it's exact. It's not a. It's not a template whatsoever. It's, yeah, it's customizable for individual. I know. Yeah. Whenever I go to the salon. I always see men getting their, you know, their nails done, not painted, but, you know, filed and yeah. just smoothened. A buff. If, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, places like Man Cave, you got, they do, they spend their time with the, with the grooming shaving products. and the grooming products and all of that stuff. And I can see men really enjoying it. Yeah. So, you know, why not, can, why can't a man be allowed to allow himself to be pampered and feel good? Yeah, I saw, uh, <laughs> I saw online, uh, there's a guy who, who kept fighting it for so long and then he went to a salon and a spa and then after about three hours he said, what do you mean? This is what happens in here? <laughs> Can you imagine amazing. feeling great for three hours? You know, like the scrubs and yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the sprays. And I can't deny myself happiness. Exactly. Even my husband, I made him have a bath for the first time with some bubble bath. Oh yeah, yeah? he's the... gonna hate me for this, by the way. <laughs> and like at first, he was like, what? "Why would I do that?" <laughs> and then after he came out, he he just felt like a different person. <laughs> he was just like floaty, floaty and, like, around, like, "Why please? haven't I done that before?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah. I, I feel like um, in modern day culture, with ASAP Rocky and people like Kanye West, they've kind of made it more acceptable for men to be interested in in fashion. Mm. Yeah, and even carrying a man bag, you know. <laughs> And I think, you know, it's it's changed how people perceive the whole idea of what it means to be a man. So 
during your years growing up, do you yeah. feel like your identity has changed or shifted at all? Or do you feel like it's pretty much um, remained the same? First of all, I'm not that old. <laughs> so I'm just from the other day. But uh, I think around our time, around our generation, was when we started seeing a lot of people now tell their parents, actually, mom, uh, you know, I feel like I like boys. Or girls saying, I feel like I like girls. Or I feel like I like both. Like, that was our generation, right? Yeah. Like, growing up. And then now it's, if you don't accept it, then you're not part of the whole process you know but it took really a lot of egg breaking and shells and coming out the closet during our generation mm -hmm. um and i feel like it was tough at that time to even know where the lines were it's it was very stereotypical and very if i'm a man i'm a man i remember piercing my ears <coughs> first of all it was a dare because one of the ladies that i liked in university told me uh, she she so she kind of made all of us at the university feel like she liked girls. Okay. Just so she couldn't get hit on by the university oh. boys. Right? Good, stra yeah. good strategy. <laughs> great good strategy. strategy. It worked so yeah, great. Yeah, peace. Right? So she told me one day. She told me actually, if you go pierce your ears, then we'll date. Wow. Okay. I went to the CBD immediately and I pierced my ears. <laughs> my ears are pierced because of a lady I wanted to date. The power of a wow. woman, yes. <laughs> and then I came back. So, of, of course, I pierced and then I tried to remove them and put the nice ones so I bled so, all over my oh, neck. Wow. I mean, like, Troy, wow, you really, Troy, you really wanted yeah, this woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. Out of one. <laughs> and then I went to the uni and we started dating. But she wasn't, she didn't like girls yeah. at all. She just wanted not to be as accessible yeah right so that's another point as well but i remember when i went home i wore a beanie for the longest time so that my my dad lived outside so he had just come back to kenya and my so i was hot the whole time but you wanted to heal and then you remove it so that at least you have nothing but yeah. at that time i had just pierced and my mom saw yeah. it and she lost her mind wow because wow. so what did it mean to her for you to have your ears pierced exactly she she felt like i was I was not straight mm. at all. And she didn't understand why I would want to be mm. a smile. She didn't understand it. I, she didn't understand it. Now she does. Yeah. She's like, oh, pierce tattoos all yeah. over. You look a certain way. I mean, it doesn't change anything. Yeah. But back then she didn't understand it. Mm. And then she started seeing now so many people, different orientation. Mm. So it changed the meaning for her. It changed yeah. the, I think that was when now for her, she also just <laughs> also went over you know yeah. and it, it was it's really refreshing to see well when i introduced my girlfriends mm. or you know so mm. now she could see okay mm. it doesn't change anything mm. you're still a man you're still mm. you know and she's also started to accept anyone who's you know of a different orientation mm. she said okay it's preference it's mm. personal choice mm. so mm. yeah for me that was quite mm. interesting i'll tell my kids this i can't wait <laughs> nice <laughs> yes. did, you, did your father pass on anything to you that told you you know what it is to be a man and what isn't a man to be honest, my dad, my dad is one of those guys who, before he leaves the house, he checks like whether his hat is fine. Mm. So you kind of like fashion like that. He's never taught me anything about. He likes when his nails look nice. Mm -hmm. He even polishes them. Yeah, and, yeah, and he's like, uh, man, man, hey. <laughs> he's the kind of guy who hugs you and like says like, oh, have you eaten? You know, like he's a manly man. Yeah, but he, for him, uh, being a man is providing and being there. You okay. know and constantly available on phone or like your kids can call you at whatever time and say dad you know i really messed up mm. and i need your help and he'll be there mm. that's that for him is mm. being a man yeah 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 Any, anything else is up to you you do whatever mm. you want yeah but mm. he lived in the states for so long mm. as well so direct that made him a bit more liberal yeah i think mm. he had seen so much yeah there's only so much you can fight yeah. you know he could see it coming yeah yeah, yeah, yeah exactly you mentioned about being a provider is that, is that still seen as something that is a trait of a man? You know, lack of, lack of, say you're out of a job or, um, you know, not able to provide for your family. Is that still seen as something that um, is held up as, you know, something, a trait of being a man or not being a man? Yes. 100%. I think so. Um, I watch this, I watch a lot of stand-up and, and, and there's something that Chris Rock said uh, that really resonated with me that um, a man is, is a, 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 women and children are loved unconditionally. I saw this clip, yeah. A man is loved yeah. on the condition that he can provide something. Yeah. yeah. Because again, and this goes back to our just pure physiological, biological capacity. Um, unfortunately, for whatever reason, society has, has looked at women as 
mothers first. Yeah. And so for any woman, where, regardless of whether you're in 2021 or 1950s, mm. the the ultimate question will always be so, so, mm. so when yeah. you know what. <laughs> Who, where, where is the, <laughs> where is big. the little one? Yeah. You know, yeah. and 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 it doesn't matter what you do with your yeah. career. It, yeah. it, it almost is is secondary to whatever it is that you're doing. The mm. first thing that a woman is is questioned on is, mm. you know, have you brought life into the world? Because you have the equipment in you to do that. I struggled with that because my my grandmother places a lot of value in in that and worth in that. So rather than saying, "Oh, Natalie, how's the career going? How's the business yeah. going?" It's, "Where's my grandchild?" <laughs> so, <laughs> and you know, if, you, if you notice, um Hillary Clinton, in fact, she was she was trolled for for a long time because um and this is this is where the worth comes in in terms of gender gender roles, yeah. right? Um on her Twitter page, for, even while she was campaigning, she wrote wife and mother and then the rest of the accolades yeah. came yeah. after that yeah. because you can do whatever you want, but society, unfortunately, mm. will still look at you as, look, you've got, you've got the tools, mm. so where are the kids? And mm. if you do that, then if you can do that successfully, mm. then you, have, you will have achieved, you know, 80% of whatever it is that you came mm. into this world for. Mm. Of course, times are changing. But now for a man who cannot do that, mm. because we cannot do that, mm. we're physiologically incapable mm. of that. So what good are we? Mm. And, and traditionally, and even up till now, your ability to provide is centered against your 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 worth mm. um and 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 you guys are, are 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 women and you you've got your careers and you've got your business and you you are who you are any man who is chilling waiting to be provided for i i i think it's like a time bomb mm. yeah mm. i i don't know you can you can tell me yeah. or yeah. not um yeah. there's a time bomb it's like okay so what's your plan, buddy? Yeah. Um, where, wh wh what's yeah. up? You yeah. know, like, okay, yeah. I see you. I see you're chilling, but you know, wh what's mm. up? And, and that is the question that a man will mm. always be asked regardless. Mm. Um, so for me, it, it's, 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 it's an undeniable fact that provision is part and parcel of, of, man, of mm. man, manhood. Mm. But we say mm. things are moving on, things are changing, the mm. world's becoming more progressive mm. and we're not as traditional as we were before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe legally women have more rights, mm -hmm. but I still think, like you've just given yep. us example of, traditional um, expectations are still very much mm. present yeah. and are very mm. much there. Like uh, me with all my freedoms and you know I can mm. pursue my dreams or whatever it might be, I feel like in today's world, um, you know, I feel like men are still threatened by the fact that I don't need mm. a man to provide for yeah. me. Yeah. I would like a partnership, mm. um, but I feel like it almost goes against me. Mm. So I feel like, like Samantha was saying, I feel if, if women were the provider and a man's kind of chilling and, you know, taking his time, um, I mean, how, how do you feel personally or what's been your experience uh, within your own social circles of women who have kind of, been deemed as successful or do you feel like they struggle more than a woman who's probably not as doesn't have as many accolades like what's your experience with that in general yeah. <laughs> in the microphone i know personally um i've had uh, instances where let's say let's say like i was dating a lady from switzerland and whenever she came to kenya she would already have like i'm gonna spend maybe ten thousand you know, like 10,000 euros or something, like during my stay here, right? And whatever happened, she knew, like I have my own money and yeah. whatnot. So whatever you do, that's yeah. on you. That's on you, right? Like you, whether you pay my bills or whatnot, I could pay it easily. Mm. Like don't make us wait for the waiter to do some math anytime the bill <laughs> yeah. comes, you know? Like we're going to pay it and move and do something else. So I think my experience has taught me that some some women, depending on who it is, they don't really care. They They have their own money. But they need to show to know that you're putting in effort, or you're not just mm. you know just looking at the wall when the bill comes, just yeah. tiny stuff like that. Or mm. like you have a plan, end of the month rent is paid, mm. stuff is paid, and stuff like I know women who, who have like sense around most of money issues and stuff like that. They just know at the end of the month maybe they get the groceries, uh, stuff like this, like uh, some utility bills mm. are, are handled, or like they know the man will pay this, this, this. Mm. So. For people that are really conscious, that is not a problem mm. to, to them. Mm. And what you said, so it's a partnership. It's mm. not, I, I need this from you and I need this from you. But now there's also the other side where mm. roles are very defined, right? And that's what we were saying. It's not, there's nothing wrong with it. Mm. It's not a template. Someone oh. says, he pays my bills. <laughs> he, he makes sure my hair is done or whatnot. And it could also be the other way around, mm. where the woman is the one that caters for the man. Mm. 
and it's very defined that this is exactly what the person is doing and then the man now is supposed to look for more opportunities you know mm. like for the family right you know like in in a very stereotypical way yeah. right in some sense there's that but in my in my case i feel like a partnership works whereas you know like w- w- how uh, swiss beats and alicia keys mm. surprise each other with uh, you know a car today and then a, a, an island tomorrow 6000 <laughs> shares tomorrow, you know something like oh, that like we each money. other yeah. right you, yeah but i f- i feel like a proper healthy one is one where money is not an issue it's just mm. a means and you do whatever because you know that there is surplus of love yeah. and understanding to know that you don't have it now i have it yeah. I don't have it. Yes. You have it. You I like know, I like the like word that. you've used, understanding. Yeah, yeah. and it is a, a part, well. Everyone's model is different, um, but I, I mean, that I, is I, ideal. I, that is ideal. Yeah. yeah. My question though is to you, ladies, is how long? How long does that understanding last? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because it can for for men it can last forever. Yeah. You know, if if you well, if you're not bringing yeah. nothing to the table, yeah. You know, we'll put up with it and keep putting up with yeah. it, and and, and it and it yeah, it might become an issue, but yeah. it's it's not pervasive. Mm. Yeah. But the minute a man doesn't have. There's a clock, and mm, how yeah. long? How long until you've mm, got it? Yeah. You know. So yeah, we're in a partnership, but you know, is it is it indefinite? That mm. you know, you can you can not have it for years. Mm. Um, and is that something that 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 women will allow to happen? Because then now now we're now we're being on the real, yeah. especially when you're married. Yes. Mm. Ah, for me, it's correct. it's um, how much ambition does this person have? Are they actually just chilling? There we go. Or are they working towards Do you something? Have a plan? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like when you're in a in a marriage or in a, a relationship, it's a partnership, mm-hmm. and you're supposed to be helping each other grow. Mm-hmm. And you don't want your partner to just be grabbing any opportunity. You want them to be working towards their passion and what they came here to do. So. For me, there has to be a level of understanding. If say your partner's lost their job or something like that, um, or ill, or yeah, or some or something like that, um, it's all about how ambitious they are and how how much they're actually working towards their goals. Um, you can you are you are able to discern um, whether or not someone's taking advantage of you, or or and chilling, or if they're actually working towards their goals. No, I agree mm. with that, but I'd also agree with what you were saying, Manizi, mm. about. When is enough enough? Mm. Yeah. Because I feel like, of course, 100% people have their ambitions, their goals and their dreams, but it comes to a point where it just remains a dream. Sure. Mm. And when does it start manifesting into something yeah. that's tangible? Mm-hmm. And when for you does that line get crossed? Because then I, I for me, tensions will, will arise. Sure. Mm. I think three years, okay, that's cool. But anything longer yeah. than that, mm. uh, then, yeah. then that's yeah, for me, I've that's seen, a deal I've breaker. That's a deal yeah. breaker. So many people. Um, yeah. It's so unfortunate. Uh, well, it's not unfortunate, but it is what it is. And this mm. is why, you know, the minute you divorce provision from masculinity, then you're setting men up for failure because, yeah. because we will be judged against that standard by the same, by the very women who are, who we will be with and who expect partnership, who expect, yeah. you know, show ambition, show a plan, show something. So, um, yeah, while, while, while we, we are all capable of providing, I think a man's primary mm. agenda mm. is to show some level of provision mm. in their in their life strategy mm. over and above anything else mm. that they're doing and then mm. and then everything else can mm. sort of fall into mm. place yeah. i have, I have yeah. a question for you maybe if i could yeah um because you've experienced both like all levels till marriage now sure. um at what point do you have you felt less like a man um mm. And this is and this is the thing. And I'm I've, I've, I'm I'm going on ten years now, married, right? Congratulations! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In this day no, and age, and I, and even I'm the raising, fact that you're yeah. married yeah. is yeah. is an achievement. You know, and, I, and I'm raising a boy and a girl. Um, oh wow! Almost nice. uh, very close in years, seven yeah. and five. And I don't think I have ever felt less of a man in my marriage, mm. unless I'm struggling mm. business wise mm. or I'm struggling. In my primary role, mm. which is uh, because I think women respond to safety yeah. and security yeah. more than anything else. Yeah. Gotcha. Safety in terms of their their person, so take care of me, you know, hold me, keep me secure, and then take care of me, um, you know, materially yeah. to the best of your ability. Yeah. So the minute the minute that 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 starts to to dissolve slightly, and again, like you said, there's no template. It depends on how you've been raised, yeah. how she's been raised, and and the context under which. Uh, you appreciate life, um, and and so we, you know, culturally from from a Muslim perspective, which is what we are, um, the roles are very clear. So the minute 
I I am and this happens this is not just just not just in my context this is for a lot of people the minute any married man and and you can ask most married men you the minute you and you you start to struggle in terms of what what you're able to bring to the table um from the mo- from from zero zero is when you guys get together and i've always said a woman can go down in many things but not in lifestyle mm. <laughs> Men don't care. <laughs> we'll live in a bed sitter. We don't we don't if it's up to us we don't we don't care. Yeah. Shower, internet. Cool. But That's uh, actually really true. But, yeah. But Men yeah, don't uh, care. Uh, where you find if you find a woman in in a in a in a shack, she's not dropping to a mud hut. She won't do that. If you find her in a two bedroom apartment, that's 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 ground zero. It's only up from there. The yeah. minute it starts to go down, then then there's a problem. Now, yeah. whatever agreement is there between you guys whether she's paying for this and you're paying for that, um once you stop having that ability for whatever reason mm. maybe illness or whatever mm. it is um or lack or or change in circumstances mm. covid now and all of mm. these things you start to see certain things um and i'm not talking about me i'm talking about just generally yeah. married men um the 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 you know it's 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 no longer like hey baby it's like oh <laughs> you again <laughs> <laughs> oh it's you okay <laughs> you know and it's these and it's these subtle shifts yeah. you know yeah. that that happen and most men don't talk about it yeah. because we don't talk yeah. um so yeah I, i i i won't say i've i've ever experienced that thank god um but i know many men who for them the ability to provide or not uh, has a direct impact on on their on their relationship, relationship. Yeah. um and it affects them it affects them sexually it affects yeah. them mm. mentally it affects them emotionally and mm. and and that that level of stress yeah. carrying that level of stress and that's why you find that men will likely marry or be with someone who supports their ambition mm. they will i mean it i know women think that it's it's a it's really about how you look and and all mm. of these things but the minute you find someone mm. who believes in in what you're doing and yeah. believes in you and is willing to Well, she's doing her thing, but she's like, "Listen, I I see what you're trying to do. I'm on board. Let's yeah. you go get it. I'll I'll be here to to help you. That guy is going to marry that girl." You mm-hmm. know, I totally agree with you, and I feel like, okay, this is made me think of other things in, in my mind. Sure. But I reckon men um only commit at acts of infidelity in my in my opinion because maybe like you said that support erodes mm. and i don't think it's anything to do with um that's why they say when a woman cheats like it's really serious because mm. it means that a woman's found an emotional connection but for a man i think it's just a vice like drinking or, or an out an outlet mm. because mm. maybe in that relationship they're not feeling that nurturing or that support from mm. from their fe- fem- mm. female partner mm. um yeah that's just uh, sorry it just triggered something in my mind about a relationship i was in many years ago where I was earning more than my partner and we actually uh, sorry I hope he's not listening to this we actually worked for the same company and he saw me progress while he stayed the, the same, same. and it started turning into a competitive strangely competitive relationship yeah. oh, wow. where he wouldn't even pat me on the back for my success um and he became resentful mm. because I was earning more than him um have you Do you have you ever experienced that <laughs> yourselves? Um all right, do you, do you think yeah. it's a challenge to some men's um feeling of being a man if they're with a partner who earns more than more them? Than them? I mean that is the ego. That's mm. the ego thing that we, mm. we were talking about where you want to because there's a okay, so you're expected to maybe pay three bills, four bills. Mm. But ego says I want to pay them. Mm. But your bank account says no she can so actually no. pay them. Yeah. <laughs> she can pay them and have this the amount you have now. So what are you what are you going to yeah. do? So I think mm. and the way we're moving uh I I know almost 9 out of 10 of the women I know have maybe 3 to 4 incomes and mm. they're making good money. Yeah. Mm. You, you know? So it's not women the are time doing well nowadays. For real, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it's not even the time now to think okay, I'm going to make more money than no. all the women I know. Yeah. It's impossible. <laughs> We're never going to do that. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just realizing that, you know, just find a comfortable space, yeah. find a comfortable conversation, find a comfortable partner that understands these things and then work through it. Because yeah. I mean, you're going to fight your whole life and then die mm. still not angry paying bills. and frustrated angry and resentful. Yeah. I, w- I mean, we've, we've worked with someone who we were together and they were senior presenter Yeah. or they're senior presenter now. And I was just a presenter, you know, and it, the, the kind of comfort that she had when we discussed stuff and whatever, and it didn't feel like, 
what about me? You mm. know, there's just something about that that even women that have a lot more than you, yeah, some of them that are very conscious, they they don't make you feel like they have more mm. than you. Mm. You know what I mean? Because they understand mm. that yours is an that ego that thing. Ego, yes, you yeah. know, I'm gonna kill you with stress because <laughs> I know you do not make as much as me. You yeah. know, and for men, we're like, oh. Yeah. That's why you find a lot of women start get a lot of men start getting aggressive at home. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. 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 You, you know, like ah, oh, but this food doesn't taste any yeah. good. Anyway. What's that money? Doing? Yeah. yeah. You know, like just subtle stuff like that, yeah. and they start getting even violent yeah. and stuff like yeah. that at, the, at yeah. the house. And it's just the tiny things. Yeah, I think that's that's my view on that. It's funny because I was in the cab one day, and cab drivers like speaking to me. I don't know why. Extensive yeah, yeah. conversations, <laughs> and he was saying to me how he was in a relationship, and um, the lady that he was with was earning considerably more than him. And she wanted him to quit his job, move in with move in, move in with with her, and he confessed to me that he he loved her, but he had to end it because he couldn't stomach <laughs> the fact that she was in a better financial position wow. than he was. Wow. And I just found that wow, that ego is really strong. Yeah. Yep. It's a driving really force. It is driving force. It is. Yeah. It's, it's it's all we've got. Yeah. It's it's, um and and this is why you know. Things like marriage and and getting together with someone, compatibility is half the battle won. Yeah. And your compatibility as a man needs to be, you know. So I'm I'm meeting this lady or this person, and where are they, financially, lifestyle? Where are they without me? Yes. What 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 are they doing? What yes. are their circumstances? What is their life plan? Yeah. How will their life plan change at some point? Mm. Will, they, will they start earning more because maybe they'll advance, maybe do another degree, maybe mm. open another business, mm. whatever it is. And if you are comfortable with that mm. and you are able from the get-go mm. to see how you, both your trajectories mm. are going to pan out and you are okay mm. with where you are, then, mm. then that's, that's a recipe for success. Mm. But if, you, if, if as a man, you, you, you come in um, at the short end of the stick and, and you know that you are you will always be earning less than this mm. than this woman and that's why they say um you know you know fight in your weight class like mm. just you know as much as yeah you want you, you want to go to the heavyweight division just like dude no, if you're, you're there if you're there yeah. and and you you know keep it there and keep moving up you know mm. but don't start something that you can't finish because um sadly um you will be judged on your ability mm. to maintain and sustainability. I, listen, I love wow. everything you've said, but it, what you've said requires, I feel like a certain level of logic yes. and consciousness. Yes. But I feel like when you're in the throes and passions of a relationship, I don't, who actually thinks that long term? That's why it's a contract. A contract, yeah. I mean, we, we spend so much time doing, I'm, I'm a lawyer by training. So there's due diligence. Um, before you hire someone, you take them through interview after interview. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, if you have your business, you're not gonna, you're not just gonna bring someone and be like, you know, I'm in the throes of passion, so <laughs> you know, come into my company. Or I'm in the throes of passion. Yeah. Here's my business. You know, I no, there's yeah. due diligence that yes. goes into it, and that's why marriage is a contract. Yeah. So you can't approach it with just love and feelings. That is a consequence. Mm -hmm. For me, right. marriage. Yeah. So you're is saying love isn't enough. It no, needs to be built fact, on more than that. No, in fact, love mm -hmm. is like, that's like a by the way. That's yeah. like a, you know, okay, it's here. And yes, because you do these things yeah. for me, now the affinity and the love grows. It's okay. not It's not the thing that is bringing us together. Mm. Because I, I love I, I love you today, I'll love you tomorrow. Mm. Love is love. Mm. I mean, it's a feeling. Mm. Um, but, but to make life decisions on a feeling, mm. child. <laughs> Yeah. But it, what's troubling me a bit what's Dang. troubling me is that you know money comes into this thing too much just a bit too much he didn't mention money he actually didn't mention money yeah you the, all the words used regarding compatibility it's about long-term goals long-term trajectory yeah mm -hmm. yeah where yeah. where what what's your what's your idea so before before for example before my wife and i sat down it was it was very pragmatic it's like okay so What's your idea till let's say 50? What yeah. does that look like? Yeah. Well, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to do this. Cool. What about you? Well, I'll be comfortable with this, this, and this. Cool. You cool with that? Mm. I'm cool with that. Mm. Let's get going. Yeah. And 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 so there's no there are no surprises. And and this thing of, you know, oh, I'm shocked. Mm. Where did this come from? Yeah. What do you Who mean? Are you? <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> what is what is this? You've changed. Like <laughs> yeah. All of these things. Yeah, like, yeah. No, I, is, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, I it's a contract. And yeah. so, communication. It's, yeah. it's communication. Yeah. 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 I, 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 and it's constant communication it's as constant. well. It's yeah. constant. It's yeah. constant. It's like, you know, so so are we still on track? You know, yeah. Mm. Uh, Vision 2050, we're yeah. still on track. Yeah. 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 You? Yeah. All good. Yeah. Are there any changes? Do you anticipate any yeah. changes? Can we do like a six-month review, a yearly review? Like this is, a, it's all, 
you know, we talk about, we throw that word around partnership, but partnership applies both to social yes. contracts, romantic contracts yeah. and commercial contracts. Mm. If it's a partnership, it's a partnership. Let's, let's deal with it with the necessary pragmatism that, that it requires. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I love okay. that. Nice. Like, I, I agree with you. I don't think many people put as much attention into their personal relationships like that as mm -hmm. they would do a business. Mm. You know, yeah. you can spend a year formulating a business plan, but not pay that level of attention to detail with your own relationship. Yeah. Yeah. That's very, I love that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you, you, look, at, you look at the past where people would, and, and it still happens now, especially mm. amongst the very wealthy, where people, like, I want to know who I'm getting married to and which family we're marrying into because this has consequences for for our future wealth and our things and whatever. And so it's not just it's not just you, the individual, it's yeah. you and everything that you come with yes. as the tip of the spear. Yeah. So there are considerations that go beyond um beyond just you know how you make me feel and how yeah. how your booty is and, and stuff like that. <laughs> it's 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 beyond it's beyond that, you know? Um and so when you uh, picking picking a partner for me and, and a life partner mm -hmm. that is you know, we spend if we can if we can pay that much attention hiring employees and 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 you know um, justifying why the bank should give us that kind of money mm. to start our business, mm. then we must put attention yeah, to studying the kind of person that we're going to be 100%. with, so that you're not like, oh my god, what happened? Yeah. You wouldn't hire yeah. someone unqualified, yeah, exactly. for a job <laughs> like you wouldn't hire a butcher to be a surgeon, would you? No, Correct. you wouldn't. You wouldn't do, do you that. understand the assignment, young <laughs> yeah. man? Yeah, you know? yeah, very true. Um, Georgie, would you say that the people, the men that you know in your life, are they that pragmatic when it comes to um, when they approach a relationship? Having well, those well, long term. Starting with, with you, strategic. Yeah, I'm trying to make yeah. it not personal. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, as for me and my wife, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, I have some of my closest friends. I, one of my closest pals just got engaged. And I remember when they were discussing, because she's really young, but she lived in uh, Canada or the UK. So also really exposed and she understands everyone's role and what's not and where the lines are, mm. have been rubbed and there's no line anymore. So they know that us getting married has nothing to do with my goals are mm. still very valid. Mm. They're still going to continue. Um, your goals are still going to continue. And then we have goals that we'll do together Perfect. but yep. do, that do not take away from our individual goals. right? Yep. And the money will be separate for the mm -hmm. three okay and if at any point anything feels strained then you'll have to get back to the drawing board and say your goals are really messing everyone up brilliant uh, you know and we need to revise or like your goals will only take us two years or a year yeah well this one might take us further uh, and i think that's that's the kind of um a approach i give uh, uh personally my, my mother my mother as well uh, heavy on savings and planning for five years five years after so that's been my biggest you know, as a man, uh, as a man who maybe sees my mother do stuff uh, like that, you want to also see your wife yes. do mm. something okay. like that, which is also sometimes very selfish mm. ah, because they might not have the, the same mentality, but you're trying to fit them into, yeah. you know, like, why why don't you plan a bit more? Like, yeah. why does the, you know, why does your hair cost a thousand dollars? No, but so your mm. model of a woman comes from your mother yes. and, and you're kind of projecting that yeah. onto your I, future. I, I feel like <laughs> I feel like I've tried to. It's it's very also very subconscious where you mm. try to okay so you have this woman who has every looks everything like you would imagine right and she thinks a certain way and she laughs at your jokes, but there's that you know that eighty twenty rule where there's just one thing where she, you're like, no this can't go long term and then there's someone else who doesn't have this but she saves like your mother yeah. right so it's a mix of. Yeah. Your background, yep. nurture, yeah. your ma and seeing what mm. she's done and what has worked yeah. and what hasn't worked and then picking from reality, mm. right? Yeah. So it's a mix of both my ma and what actually happens sure. in reality. Mm. Yeah. So I would say that. Interesting. Mm. I'm all for that. If you've got a checklist, you've got a checklist. Yeah. It's your checklist, bro. Yeah, it is. It's your, if, you've, if your checklist has somehow some Oedipus complex thing going on, <laughs> that's cool. You know, your checklist is your checklist and you've got your KPIs and all of those things. So when you go to recruit your partner, you know, you, you like, look, do you save? Mm. Okay. Yeah, okay, tick. Yeah. Are you, you know, God-fearing? All right, we, we'll, 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 we'll come back to that, yeah. you know? And you do this thing. Yeah. And, 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 and I think that's the kind of pragmatism that, mm. that yeah. is required for any kind of success. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, lovely. Mm. We have to close on that. I, yeah. I love how, I think I've realized that we're not that different to be fair um but thank you so much for coming mm -hmm. on this podcast Thanks podcast 10 thank yes. you for having thank us thank you Anything? no i mean we've, we've enjoyed being in this amazing space 
And yeah, we're it's a wrap. <laughs> bye. Bye bye.